Welcome back to a farm west of Boring, where things are never boring. Today we're going to go through installing a garage door, and I'm going to show you how we saved over $1,000 by installing the garage door ourselves. I've put together 10 steps for a successful installation of a garage door, and so let's get right into it. Stick around to the end, and I'll have two extra tips that'll make it even easier for you. Step number one. Be sure that you read all the instructions from your manufacturer on how to install your garage door. Read the warnings, and if you don't feel comfortable with the installation, please find a professional to do your installation for you. This video is not intended to be a replacement for those instructions, so be sure to go online and download the instructions and print them out so that you have those at hand while you're installing the door. Go through all your components that you received with your garage door and make sure that you have everything. Check it against the list in your instructions. Uh, make sure that you have all your parts and bolts and things that you need. Um, also, I went through and actually marked all the different bags of screws and segregated them out uh, so that, and marked on the bag what each screw was, what the size of it was, what the length of it was, and compared that with the instructions. Also go through all the components that you received with your garage door and make sure you understand what each part is and mark it appropriately. Some things go on the right side of the door and some things go on the left side of the door, so mark left and right and understand what all those parts are. Step number three is laying out the vertical tracks. You attach the brackets to the sides and also the flag to the top of the vertical tracks. That is where the horizontal track will tie in with the vertical track at a later time. Okay, so we got the old plywood and OSB off the wall, off the door. And we've got the first panel of the door set in place there. And we used just some clamps to hold it to keep it from falling over and check the level make sure it's level and it's centered in the doorway so it's the same distance at this end as at the other end and the first thing to do is is take these doohickeys and this doohickey here, it's got the cable hooked into it, and it says left, so that's upside down, um, and left is from the inside looking out, so this is, this is left, and that's right, so this is the left side, and this cable here needs to get hooked around that little Milford pin down there. Okay, so we've got a, the uh, brackets screwed in and fairly loose with um, 5 16 by 2 inch leg <coughs> bolts. The instructions say they're supposed to be an inch and 5 8 inch long, 1 and 5 8 inch long. The instructions say, but we have 2 inch leg screws, so I guess that's fine. We have solid 2x4s in behind here. Actually, I think they're 2x6s. Let me see how we marked that when we built the door, built this and sheetrocked. So there's, I think, three 2x6s going up behind here. And that's part of the structure because there's a, there's, um, large Simpson steel straps that come down off the glue lamb. There's a glue lamb up there. And they come down and come down to, I don't know, as far down as here or somewhere. But, so when we went to put the leg screws, leg bolts through here, we had to drill a bigger hole through the steel strap in order to get the leg through there.
There we go, we've got left side on. It's not fully bolted, it's loose, we can adjust it. And we have the right side on. Step six is next. Hey, if you're getting any value out of this, if you're enjoying this video, please uh, do us a favor and give us a thumbs up. And also hit the notification bell that you'll know when we get another video out. Also, please consider subscribing. That would really be helpful for us. And remember, if you watch until the end, you'll get two more tips on how to easily put this garage door on. So we got the tops panel prepared by putting this strut on here. It's a U strut and we screwed it in with two self-tapping screws at this end. And then six inches from the center line, screw going back in here, screw going in here. And then the uh, center pull for the garage operator, door operator, that got put in here with six screws. And this end. So I guess that's a reinforcing for the top of the top panel to make it more sturdy. Okay, the next step was to attach these brackets here for four screws and then we had to loosen this up so that this will slide back and forth and we do the same at that end okay so we have the bottom three panels in there everything here is pretty still pretty loose and we've got screws going through I haven't put in all the screws problem that we have here is that this panel right here is about a quarter inch too short so it doesn't line up exactly at both ends so we had to sort of sort of had to split the difference so we have the middle hinges attached and the end hinges attached so now we're going to go ahead and put this top panel in So we've got the vertical tracks on and we've got the horizontal track put on, although it's just flying back here. We haven't hooked up that end yet. So the one thing that we had to do is to get these bolts here tightened and we had to push the track out toward the wall so that the roller was tight up against the back. Now this one here is a little bit loose, but that's because we still have a trim board to put outside there. So I think once that trim board's on, this will be tight. This one here is pretty tight. And this one here yeah, is tight. Now, we've run into a problem. The instructions say that there's either 12 inch or 15 inch radiuses on the horizontal bar and that thus they line up. So we technically are supposed to have 15 inch radiuses, best of my knowledge. But if you look right here real close, what does that say? It's upside down, 14 inches. So when we went to put this one on, to get it level, to get this arm level, this part right here was three-fourths of an inch too long. So when it fit against here, it forced that down so it wasn't wasn't level. I had to cut I had to cut three-fourths of an inch off the end of this angle here. And then when we went to get it put on, this bolt wouldn't fit through. I'll show you from the other side. 
this bolt here would not fit through that slot because we were about three fourths of an inch too low. So I had to go ahead and drill another hole here. So I think that was because this is made for a 15 inch radius. This is a 14 inch radius, which then made this drop down. Therefore I had to modify it. Now everything else seems to be okay. We got the, we got these bolts in here. This is, this is in here okay. We'll tighten that up. This will get tightened up. Now we go over to this one. And lo and behold, this bolt fits. I still had to cut three fourths of an inch off of this one, but I'm not sure that I had to. Now, see, we leveled it, so I I had to take a little bit off, but not total three quarter inch. My question was, is well, is this the is this one the same as the one on the other side? And the answer is no. This one measures. 14 and three quarters or you know, close to a 15 inch radius not quite 15 inches but it's about three-fourths of an inch more of a radius than that one down there so the question will come this one is about five-eighths to three-quarters of an inch higher than that one so is the door going to be cockeyed when it's rolled up i have a feeling that may be a problem i go guess we'll see one of the situations that we had here is trying to figure out how to make sure that these horizontal rails were square to the or perpendicular to the wall so it either, if it came out like here, it wouldn't be square. If it went up there like that, it wouldn't be square. So this is about the best that we could figure out how to get it square because that wall up there is not absolutely straight because as part of the structural framing of this garage, we had to put big, huge, real thick steel uh, tie metal uh what do you call them straps metal straps from here up to about here onto that glue lamb there's a glue lamb that goes all the way across here and so that metal strap holds everything out about a quarter inch there but not over here so if you try to use a square the square is going to be off whichever way you go we tried using the laser level trying to throw a laser down there and then measure from this one over to that one over there. And then we measured the distance between that one and this one to make sure that these were parallel. And I've got it about as good as I can figure out. Now the supports up there, that's bolted into the bottom of a truss, the bottom cord of a truss up above. And it had to go there, or else it would have to go over here somewhere, two feet. There's two feet between the two. So I couldn't put it right near the end of the horizontal rail. And even though the instructions say you shouldn't be more than six inches from the end of the rail, I don't know what to do. And up here, so this bolt here, this bolt here would typically be going in if this if this hanger was out here at the end. Uh, and then that would hold the door from sliding off the end. I had to turn it around so that the rollers could go past that. And then I put a one inch bolt here. And that needs to be tightened up. That's a little loose. One inch bolt here going in so that the the rollers won't go off the end. 
I'm gonna go through this and sort of show you how we had to do this. First of all, this spring mechanism is got a label at the left side, so that is supposed to be at the left side. This winding mechanism here goes on to the spring adjustment thing that sticks out from the inside of this. So it has to stick out about five inches on either end. And then it slips down into the little, there's a little U-channel at the top of this flag piece. And then this cam shaft or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's a real name for it. Fits over that. And it's got a little wheel in there with teeth on it. And then this is a little release that will release those. This little Paul thing here adjusts whether it free wheels or it clicks. And the down position is for operating when you're operating the door. So in normal situations, that's going to be down. If you're adding tension to the spring, then that will go up. If you add tension or take tension off, that will go up. It's pretty technical getting this on here. This little bolt here holds it to the flag deal. These go into the wall. You can see how those little teeth hook on to this. And I'll show you here in a few minutes. This is how we go, how we uh, add tension to the spring using a ratchet. So I've got that on both ends. This is a warning label that's supposed to go on the end of the uh, uh, ratchet bracket. And if you look closely at this, I don't know if that focuses or not. The, you've got to make sure that that thing is engaged with that pawl. And I'm supposed to leave this attached up there, although it's come off, or I'll put it back on. So here we are at the right end. I'm going to go ahead and start turning this. It says to turn this one two or three times first, and then go to the left end and do the left one. So I'm going to put the pawl up. Okay, so I've made a mark here so that I can count right. So now, put this on here and counterclockwise is this way. Okay, so we'll start there. I've got a mark here and here. So we're gonna go one turn. Two turns, and that's what they say. Do two turns on the right, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark one, two. And you'll notice I've got the locking pliers <clears throat> on here to keep the door from climbing up. I have the same, <clears throat> same at the other end. So now, this end, is clockwise so we're gonna go clockwise is this way so there's our mark so I'm gonna go there's one. Oh, I have to Put this in the up position. Okay, so this is in the up position and this is out. And this is out. So that little arm is in there. We'll catch on the ratchet that's in there. So we're going to start again. Okay. One. Two, 
and I'm just going to go ahead and mark these as we go just to make sure I don't forget. So one, two, Here we are back at the right side. We put 16 turns on the left side. And we're going to go ahead and put 14 more here. And counterclockwise. So there's one, two, and I'll go ahead and mark that. So I put 16 turns on both ends and the little lever thing is in the down position. So I've got that done at both ends. So let's see if this thing operates. Beautiful. Seems to work pretty good. And we're just nice and even on this track. And we're even. even on this side. So it looks like we are set. Now we have to get in here and clean this garage out so we can get a car in here. Well, and then plus put a opener on it. 